Hey everyone, it's Will, Gamer Dad, with another video for you. So in this video, we're going to be tackling the sixth Eastern Spirit Horror that I'm encountering, which is the Menrike. Now if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate it. Also, I do have a Patreon account for those who want to support me that way. So the hint from the um, Dogu does tell us that we have to head to a seaside village and then question some uh, straw dummies. And we all know where that is, which is in Zami. So here in the video, I will show you the locations of all four uh, of the straw men you should talk to. And after that, we have to decide who is the liar who stole the offerings. Now keep in mind that three of them will always tell the truth and one of them will always lie. And this is very similar to um, some of the childhood um, brain teasers that I've come across a long time ago. Again, I can't remember the exact uh, example, but it's kind of like someone will always tell the truth, someone's always lying, so who is it? So after some thought and consideration, we have a choice to make. Now keep in mind, if you do make the wrong choice, you will have to travel all the way back to the Dogu Cavern and obtain another mustard fluid. However, in this case, we know the right answer is Kizukawa. And he deserves exactly what he got. All right, so we get the key item abnormal soybeans. And once we travel back to the Dogu Cavern, we can encounter the Dogu and we can um, unlock the door. Keep in mind that to come down here, you just have to take the elevator uh, directly from the entrance and go down to basement floor one and head directly left. Now in this case, Menrique has a number of different forms. So it starts off with a very large single form and afterwards it can split into two and then split again into four. So my Lodo is an all earth based DPS team and we're going to start with um, the front four not needing Mario. We're just going to use a half AFR and just slaughter the hex out of it. There we go. Stop it! Stop it! He's already dead! Yeah, dead for now that is. At first, the battle looked very easy. I actually had to try this one a few times just to get the uh, timing down. Now keep in mind that uh, each of the uh, large forms as well as the ones they split into um, has a set move. So the first one is kind of a single target water-based um, magical attack. And then it comes out with the um, waterfall AoE, which is actually the same as Mighty. And then you can uh, do a couple of other things. So that's the first one. And note that the single target does apply poison as well. If you also notice that um, there's light underneath the characters, after three turns, that will essentially put you to stone. And so my recommendation is to um, have uh, stone resistance badges on the front too, especially for your int debuffer. Now in my case, I don't have Yuna and Yuna would be perfect here um, also, Lokito AS would be perfect here because they can apply either permanent int debuffs or in the case of um, Lokito, uh, I guess Yuna, AoE um, int debuffs. So the third turn there is um, a non-elemental 800 fixed damage. And you can see after the third turn, Tsubami turned to stone. Now, I put my two um, stone resistance badges, one on Mario in slot 3 and one of my dedicated debuffer, which is OG Nagi with Manifest Weapon. Keep in mind that now with Calamity Axe, she can stack 20, then 10, then 10 int debuff on the enemies. The only problem is that she's relatively slow, so sometimes the enemy actually gets their magical move out before I land a second or third hit. And if that's the case, there's gonna be a little bit of a problem. Now I would normally solve it by adding a speed badge, but in this case we do need, um, you know, the Stone resistant fat. Your other alternate way is to move the different slots and put your uh, healer and other things in turn spot one and two, and then that way, um, you know, that'll be fine. One thing to also know is when the person is turned to stone, they can't be healed and they can't take any action. So uh, you're going to be stuck um, doing them doing nothing, and it will just make the battle either longer or eventually you can get wiped to shreds. The waterfall is very deadly if you don't have int debuffs on your team and 
having Mario obviously uh, shielding with Aurora Force can help a lot as well. And this one's really annoying. The one that applies um, poison um, as well as the AoE fixed damage can really wreck havoc. So the main thing is make sure you use a lot of Earth AoE attacks. Um, in the case of OG Tuva with Manifest Weapon, her Great Wall does a tremendous amount of damage. Also, don't neglect her uh, Call of the Dark, the, the, being that that move also boosts the Earth DPS of all your Earth-based characters. Tsubami also has Mole Technique, and you can use that for the 2-hit, which also is an AoE, and um, also boosts your um, DPS for your entire team. Now, obviously, if you stack both of them, there is a diminishing returns problem. However, still better than nothing, and especially since Nagi doesn't have any um, Earth-based AoE, she does have the, I guess, the uh, Intertwine. Now, the trick is to try to kill off um, both of the medium-sized ones in one go, so that when they both explode, then you can use one large AoE and wipe out all four smallest ones. And each subsequent size change, where they get smaller and smaller, they do have a little bit less uh, max HP. Now, keep in mind that every time you uh, start with smaller ones or whatever, it resets the moveset. So they start off with a single target uh, water-based attack that applies um, status. In this case, I was unlucky and both of them hit Tsubami. Keep in mind, I also didn't have a chance to apply um, int on these new mini minions, so to speak. But by spamming AoEs, Ground Razor, as well as um, the Great Wall, and keep in mind that over 50% life, the Great Wall does more damage, it'll end the battle very, very quickly. In this case, I still have to survive one small one, and I've lost uh, one of my characters, Tsubami. That being said, we still have backup. We have Lokito as well as we do have Mario. And being that Mario has an elemental shield upon coming in and two additional hits, um, the Invigorating Fog is a perfect single target um, DPS for ending the battle right there. That was pretty tough, but we did it. Nice. Stop flexing, Dad. Well, sometimes you just gotta flex. I really did enjoy this fight, although it was got a little bit frustrating at times. I don't know about you guys, but I do have to experiment with my team um, as well as um, just kind of the moves that I want to apply. For myself, I put all my AF moves on the far right, and I know some people probably put it all in the middle or all on the left, or depends on so on and so forth. So in this case, uh, my right move uh, is my AF spammer, and so I actually did switch my Great Wall to the right, whereas usually Call of the Dark is my go-to uh, for um, AF. So it was a little bit different, and of course, uh, figure out which uh, people to put um, stone resistant badges on is important as well. So again, here's my loadout. Keep in mind that between AS and OG, Nagi will share the same Grasta, so they obviously won't change. And my Tsubami is fully stacked with 20-20-30. Like most of my characters that I use frequently, I do put uh, as best the Grasta as I can on them. Although I haven't upgraded a lot of the uh, Eastern Region Part 2 Grasta yet, though the ones that apply status or whatever. I'll slowly do that over time, but for now, um, straight DPS seems to be the trick. Thanks for watching! We'll see you next time.